How you doing guys? Paul Sweeney, Canberra Science School Rock here. Uh, today we're going to do an Ed Sheeran song. Uh, probably one of his really, really popular hits. It's been out in the past while. It's been released twice. Um, it's called Perfect. So, what you need for this song, right? You need one of these, a capo, right? It, you can play it without it, but it'll be a bit low in English to play along the track. So you put this onto one, right? In this song, Ed, if you ever notice, Ed Sheeran does not use a pick. But from what I can see, I can't see him using a pick. And I can't hear him using a pick. So, in this song, we're going to need a G. Right? And we're going to need an E minor. And we're going to need a C. And we're going to need a D. Right? There's a little bridge part that uses a D with an F sharp bass note. Ed Sheeran uses this quite a lot. Um, but we'll get to that in the very end. So there's a few, there's basically three parts for this song. You need to know the intro. Right? The intro and the verse are the same. The pre chorus is the same as the verse. And then there's a the chorus. Right? What Ed Sheeran does in this, he picks. Right? But we're just going to play it straightforward and simple just now, and I'm going to put another lesson on later explaining how he does this. Right? So, to start off, you need a G, and you're going to go 1, 2, three. Right? So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. that for the verse and the pre-chorus right so I think in the verse he plays it four times and then in the pre-chorus I think he does it four as well you hear if you put the track on you'll hear it you'll hear the change come in it's when he starts say, saying dancing in the dark and you're going to change from there right so what we're going to do for that we're going to come from an E minor right so it's going to go Together. I'm only going to play a short version, so I'm going to play the chorus with the verse as well, right? It's, it's the exact same, the, the pre-chorus and the verse are the exact same, so it's going to go...
see that wee bit I just did there. Right, so that's kind of going to bridge the end of the chorus to the next verse. Right, so what they do, it does here, it does a G, right, right, and a D, and an E minor, and a D with an F sharp, and a C, then a D. Right, so if you put that all together, you go. So the last C and the last D, you do it twice as long. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two. And that is what we've got there. So you've got the verse and the pre-chorus. should work on this in, in this song is getting used to these changes right so the changes in the song are quite simple when you're coming from the G to the E right we've got what you call an anchor finger right the anchor finger is this finger here your first one on the G to go to the next chord it's going to stay where it is you're just going to tuck your finger underneath right so you go from G to E right so the way I want you to get used to that is I want you to go from G to E and keep doing it. You don't need to strum, you can just get used to it. It's all about remembering where these shapes go. It's getting your hand hand moving to these, right? So you must work in your muscle memory, right? So muscle memory is very, very important because you want to be and get to a stage where you can just say G and your hand goes into that shape right away. E and E, right? So you sit and do it. Best way to do it is to try and do it for a minute and see how many movements you can get in a minute. Keep doing it. Right, getting you getting these sounding great. And then you go from this E. Some people would play the E like that. I would play it that way if I was playing another song that I wasn't gonna go to the next the way this next chord's gonna come about. So from here we've then got another anchor finger, right? We have the middle finger stays where it is. And then the third finger goes on the second string from the top. And this one goes on the second one from the bottom. So you've got like a set of stairs. One, two, three. Right? And then to go from here, we go to the D. Right? There is nothing that stays here, everything's got to move. But you have got one that's very close. So you want to look for, you want to look for what's closest. So I would put this one on first. Second fret of the G string. Put this one on the bottom, second fret. That there in the third, right? So you get it. You move it from G to E, back and forth, E to C, remember that anchor finger, keep it there, right? Um, and then from the C to the D, right? You just need to get used to moving that one, right? These are very important chords, the D especially. You'll play that all the time, doesn't matter what songs you play, it's going to be a D about there somewhere. And um, so the next, the next part, um, you're going to have a E and a C, right? You've already worked on that, right? So, what we need to get used to now is going from the C to the G, right? Everything's got to move in that, unfortunately. And um, so, when you go from and then you go from the G, you're going to get, need to get used to going from the G to the D, right? 
keep doing that. Anchor finger, there's your anchor finger right there. That one stays where it is, does not move ever. If you've watched some other videos, I've spoken about this before, I can't stress it enough that you need to do this in order to get better. You don't jump with all your fingers moving about. You need to fit, if there is anything you can keep there, keep it. It's easier said than done, no, because you've got an automatic reaction to take all your hands off when you want to go to another chord. So, that seems to be everything, if I think so. And then when you get to the, the wee bridge, you need to get used to, the only one you need to get used to is going from D to E, back to D, C, and D. Right? So the chorus, sorry, the verse, G, E, C, and D. Same for the, uh, the pre-chorus, and the chorus is E, C, G, D. Remember that number four? It always comes about four. Everything will wake back to four somehow, right? It will all make sense later on. Um, so I hope you've liked this video. Any comment, any questions, pop them in the comments below. I'll try to get through them all as soon as possible. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and catch you the next time. Don't forget to subscribe.